<laughs> Hello, it's Rich Herring's Let's Square Theatre Podcast. It's me, Rich Herring, and my guest is Reginald D. Hunter, or Reg D. Hunter. No one's quite sure, not even he. Uh, if you enjoy these shows, why not uh, go and buy a badge at gofaststrike.com slash badges, or join, uh, become a drip subscriber at d.rip slash richard hyphen herring. Uh, there's all sorts of benefits to both of those things. I'm not going to bore you them with them now. You know, you've got important things to do, like watch me talk to Reginald D. Hunter. Uh, you can come and see me on tour through the spring of 2018. I'm all over the shop. Uh, and uh, go to richhang.com slash gigs. Uh, there's probably tickets available for most of those still. Don't worry. Uh, and you can go to gofaustastrike.com and buy my books and my DVDs. Uh, Christmas emergency questions. I mean, it's it's good for all the... It's like a dog. A dog is not just for Christmas. It's all year round. Uh, and uh, an emergency questions. Dogs are pricks as well, aren't they? I tell you. I'm, I'm, I'd chuck mine in a river if I got a, half a chance. Anyway, let's sit back and enjoy... <laughs> She's lovely. Richard Herring's... Leicester Square Theatre D.Rip slash Herring Done. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Leicester Square Theatre. Please welcome a man who you definitely have not seen at all this week at all. <laughs> or last week, or this week. This is the first time he's come onto stage. It's Richard Harry! <laughs> Hello! Welcome to Rich Herring's Leicester Square Theatre Podcast. Uh, I was, um, I was hanging around. I'm going to do the same one. I was hanging around. It's so good. I don't want to lose it. I, I was, this isn't the second take or anything, people at home. This is uh, fun. I was hanging around with Andy from Andy's Dinosaur Adventures. He's also in Andy's Prehistoric Adventures, which is not as good. It, yeah, thank you. It's, um... It is the biggest misuse of time travel technology there has ever been, what Andy is doing in those dinosaur adventures. I believe I'm talking to an audience of people who don't watch CBeebies, but I'm playing to an audience at home who are fucking killing themselves at this. Just go back five minutes, Andy, and don't break the thing. That's my takedown of Andy from Andy's Dinosaur Adventures. He calls it Rehella Stop, anyway. I don't know if that's, that's going to catch on. And it's, I think this is the Christmas edition. This is, the, this is the Christmas edition. This is going out in Christmas week. And it's Christmas now here in the studio as well. That is... Uh, and so I thought it'd be good to go. It, it might still be time if you're at home to buy a copy of uh, Christmas Emergency Questions from GoFasterStripe.com. Uh, it's the perfect Christmas gift. Uh, I'll give you some examples of what we've got on here. I'll read one off the back. Uh, would you prefer to have eyes that were literally mince pies and thus be blind? Or feet made of Quality Street, but only the horrible green ones? Good question, isn't it? Does Santa's sleigh come with a toilet or do you, does he just wee in his pants or down people's chimneys? It's a question, it's a question that I think has to be addressed. Um, has anyone ever literally given you their heart for Christmas? And did you hold on to it or give it to someone else on Boxing Day? Pretty good question. So, uh, pretty good. We have to think a little bit about it. It's very, you know, on Christmas, that's going to go over people's heads. They're drunk. So... We're going to crack straight on because I have to get a train back to Hertfordshire. And uh, it's, we've already been held up what, what, long enough in this podcast. We've had a great time here in the studio, right? Yeah. Hey, yeah. Don't often get uh, mistakes and stuff going on. Anyway, this is my guest this week. You're not as good as last week's audience, I've told you already. Uh, he's probably best known as DJ Resplendent from Trex and Flipside. Might have been and the Flipside. Uh, he's also, of course, in Channel 4's Does Doug Know? That's why we're all here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Reginald D. Hunter! Oh. Is he coming? He's playing a prank on me again. I'm being pranked. He has a slight mobility issue. He's Reginald D. Hunter! We're going to have to do this bit twice as well. Here he comes. Hey. Welcome. Come sit down, please. Please sit down. Reginald Hunter, how you doing? Hey man, probably better than I deserve. How you doing? <laughs> Thank you for having me. Hey, it's how you doing? It's my pleasure. It's my absolute pleasure. I've been, as I was saying, but I, we, I'm trying to get in touch with you for a while to get you on this. So I'm delighted you are finally here. Do you remember much about DJ Resplendent in the show from 
Treks and the flip side. Yeah. What was that? That, that was... <laughs> <laughs> that was... Uh, it's my, what you're best known for. My British acting debut. Okay. And, uh, yeah, uh, thank goodness uh, not a lot of people saw it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, well, I... You know, one of the first times I saw you do stand-up is what it was a, like an epiphany in a, for me as a stand-up. Right? I didn't do much stand-up in the nineties. I did a bit and stopped, and then I came back in the early two thousands and started doing stand-up again. Came out of retirement. Like I came I'll out leave. of retirement, and came back. I sort of got rid of the deadwood and came back on my own. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you've been holding me back. And uh, I saw you in a gig down in that uh, you know great Portland Street station, that little uh, oh, pub yeah, downstairs. Yeah. And I'd done the first half, and I was very much doing scripted stuff. I was quite early back. I was doing 20 minutes, and it was all mm. quite scripted. And you were a bit late, and everyone had to wait for you. And then you came down the stairs, and we kind of got into your bit, and you were meant to do 20 minutes, and you probably did an hour. <laughs> and you just sat down on the stage and just seemed to talk about what had been going on in your day. And it didn't seem like stand-up at all. It was very funny, but it felt like it was a totally improvised... <laughs> Sometimes Story. you have to be careful with British people because <laughs> they might be insulting you, but it sounds like a compliment. <laughs> well, A, you were sitting down. You sat down. You came and sat down. And, yeah, that, that blew my mind. I thought stand-up, you had to stand up, so that was the first. <laughs> but I saw you do this, and you just talked for, you just talked for an hour, and you kept, everyone was wrapped, and everyone was just having a lovely time, and I just thought, that's a matter... I thought, I would love to do comedy where I don't have any idea what's going to happen. So in a way, you created this podcast eventually. <laughs> <laughs> I've just come on stage and we'll talk and we'll see what happens. Do you remember that gig? I mean, did you do that a lot? Did you get, did, was it scripted? Do you remember when you were doing stand-up in 2004, 2005? Yeah, I, or would you just come I was, I was in a phase in my career yeah. uh, where I was, uh, you know, I was trying to sound natural on stage. And yeah. uh, I got a friend, um, he's, he's a comedian, and... Uh, he struggles with being funny, but <laughs> but what he do is uh, he come on stage and he comes on stage and he just start talking. He, he he starts his stage performance like he does a conversation. Yeah. He'll walk walk up to a group of people and be like, "Hey, yo, it's parking over there," and just <laughs> and just and so I'm like, "Yeah, I'm gonna try some of that." Yeah. And um, it does make your set rather lengthy. And um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I, but I remember that phase. Yeah. Um, before you know. Um, Serious white people started paying me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> serious white people like you to observe time, and so. <laughs> but it was a It was like a proper. All those, you know, occasionally you have gigs that stick in your memory, either your, your own or of other people's. It's just one of those, and I just thought that's because I just felt like I'd been so, you know, I'd done okay, but I'd just been, I'd been so restricted by what I was well, doing, you, you, and then this just totally free, and it was just so relaxed. It was just unbelievable. You know, it was there was exactly it was no effort to to go, hey, I'm going to go for the punchlines, but you were making people laugh all the way through as well. No, so. yeah, well, um, it, 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 during that phase of my career, there was this, it, was, it was really lovely, man. You'd go on stage, <laughs> and um, I, would, you know, I would have a taste of beverage before I went on stage. <laughs> and uh, if you're doing real good, man, the bar would just start sending taste of beverages up to the stage. <laughs> and then you'd be like, well, this must mean they want me to stay. And, <laughs> and I remember I did it one night, man, and just, oh, I was terrible. I pissed all over myself. <laughs> And she know British audiences, they'd be like, yeah, it's, 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 it's real, it's raw, go. <laughs> <laughs> so unusually, you got into comedy, you were, at, you were, at, you were training as an actor, mm. you came from America to England yeah. to train as an actor, mm. which is, the, it usually works the other way around in England, is that the black actors all go to America to become <laughs> successful. Yeah, so, so I figured there were some vacancies over here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> You know that technique of going where the work used to be. And <laughs> <laughs> but is it true you just got into stand up sort of as a almost as a bet? Did you have a bet? It was a more of a dare. You yeah. know, I was um I was in this pub in Birmingham and um I had just lost my pantomime job. Um <laughs> Long John Silver. And um, <laughs> and um I'm sitting at the bar and you know, I'm kinda of, I've had a taste of beverage or two and I'm kinda of ranting a bit. <laughs> And I'm ranting, I'm, I'm, I'm talking out loud, and, and, and about 10 people in the bar, and they're laughing and giggling, and one person says, hey, man, you should do the stand-up. And he points to the sign that says, stand-up every Tuesday. And I was like, yeah, man, maybe. And I was like, maybe. <laughs> and uh, I called the guy that ran the gig, and I said, hey, man, I want to come do some stand-up at the show. And he says, you're a professional stand-up? I said, never done it. And he said, 
you funny? I said, that's what I want to see. <laughs> and he said, uh, he said, I don't know. You American? I said, yeah, that help? And he said, come on down and we'll see what, what we can do. Yeah. And uh, I got on stage and um, I, I, I wasn't in love with stand-up to start with. So, I mean, if it hadn't gone well, you know, I'd done something else. But yeah. it went better than I anticipated. <laughs> and I thought, man, I found something I'm pretty good at that's legal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think a lot of comedians probably have that epiphany in some way. You know, in like, I'm going to give this a go. You've got to make that first leap. But that, it's, you know, that's It was kind of a lark, you know. Yeah, yeah. Be like, I, I, if, if nothing else, I can tell my grandkids one day, yeah, one time I do some stand-up in England. <laughs> And so did the, uh, the design, you were still trained to be an actor, were you at RADA or? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's pretty amazing. So that's like a, that's a big school to get into as, a, as an actor. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was all right, yeah. yeah. But it was somewhere near the end of my, my, my term now that I realized that um, there wasn't a whole lot of black roles in Shakespeare. <laughs> and, and it was a year after that that I started realizing I probably wasn't gonna play James Bond. And, <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, it's, uh, but, I was supposed to be here like a, like a year or so, and I just kept staying. Yeah. And just, just uh, every day it was something new. Somebody would say something that I didn't understand, or that, <laughs> that it was English, but not the English I was familiar with. And so, yeah, it was, it was a nice. And ride. So, you've been here for like, tw what, 25 30, tw years? Hey, like? man, 20 this year. <laughs> yeah. 20 years. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I don't well, know that's... about you sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> When are you going? When are you going to go? Just you're, you're going <laughs> we don't like foreigners over here anymore. <laughs> would you like to go back to America? In the current, do you, you must go back. Obviously, you have got family over there. But did, would you? How do you feel that America's going at the moment? Well, um, it's been a while since I've been back. Um, Is it? Yeah. Um, I, I, I stopped going when I saw that um, shooting niggas was back in fashion. <laughs> <laughs> And, um, <laughs> and, um, and, uh, and, uh, that never really caught on over here. No. And so, uh, <laughs> Not in the same way. We never, we never. <laughs> but, uh, I'm delighted, I'm delighted you've decided to stay. I have to say, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, well, you know, you, you mentioned that word then that, uh, Shooting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you've, you've, you've uh, it's sort of weird, isn't it? You've kind of got into a few situations where you've used that word, the word nigger. I'm going to say it because it's the word we're talking about. Hey, women. baby. Uh, and uh, <laughs> it sounds so much better when I say it, yeah. doesn't it? Uh, <laughs> Look at you pulling out the big nuts. <laughs> 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 and you got into, I mean, you, you, you named a lot of your shows with that, with that in, the, in the title, and, uh, and then you did this uh, corporate for the footballers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that you went um, famously awry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I had a girlfriend um, uh, about, I don't know, about 10, 15 years ago, and um, we just got to playing around, you know, and we, we started to add and niggas to titles. <laughs> yeah. So we came up with, like, Finding Nemo and niggas. <laughs> <laughs> the Lion King and niggas, <laughs> and um, and so I, I, I and so we kept messing around. And I, I finally came up with a show called um, Pride and Prejudice and Niggas, <laughs> and uh, a lot of people got upset about that. Uh, yeah, mostly Jane Austen fans. <laughs> <laughs> it's a surprising pissy little bunch, man. <laughs> and um, but yeah, it's um. It, it, it's, it was just part of my vernacular. Sure. I mean, where I come from. Um, I was uh, in Georgia. My daddy got sick about four months ago and I had to dash back to see him. And um, I was getting his mail out the box. And I heard the soft male voice behind me say, excuse me, sir, may I please ask you a question? And I turned and I looked and it was a young black boy, about 19, sleek and beautiful, two minutes darker than midnight. And <laughs> I looked at him. And my heart was already touched because he had said, sir, and please. And I felt this well of pride building up in my, stomach, my chest, like, you fucking right. In my part of the world where I'm from, we still teach young people how to respect adults. And I said, what can I do for you, son? And he said, have you seen a bitch and four niggas walk past here? <laughs> I swear to God that happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
And I said, uh, son, there's a much more elegant way of saying that, but they went that way. <laughs> But it's something that's interesting there. I mean, because usually it's, you know, if, if a white person uses that word, then uh, they're in trouble. I'll be, I'm now going to be in trouble, aren't I? Uh, but uh, I know, but and, 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 if a black person does this, that's, that's. I know, I know. And like, okay. white people invented the word. Yeah. I think in this country that's called irony. <laughs> <laughs> But it's sort of weird that you, you've, you've ever gotten in trouble. The, 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 the football one was sort of I mean, weird. We call it getting in trouble, man. But getting in trouble I mean, in getting, the first, I mean, getting in trouble is like some, some middle class people get mad at you and don't come to your show. <laughs> you know, they don't drive up to your house and shoot your family and nothing like yeah. that. I mean, that's trouble. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about your family a bit because I think there's, you, you've got eight siblings and you're the youngest by quite, well, you have you have a lot younger than some of them. You've got quite a lot of grown-up yeah, sisters a, when you were born. I got a sister that's pushing 71. Right. And, uh, and uh, the, the youngest to me, and, and, and closest to me in age, is 10 years older. She's right. four, 58. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 48 plus 10. It's, quite, it's, a, it's, it's a trick. You say you're the fourth funniest person in your family. Yeah, that's true. Who, who, are, the, who are the three funnier than you? My dad was number one for years. Yeah. He don't slip to number three because he's kind of old. <laughs> And then there's, a, there's my sister. Um, I, t I probably take a little of each of them on stage with me every night. My sister is a great mimic. Okay. And uh, yeah, she has a great sensibility. And then there's my, my nephew, Chauncey. Um, he did like, uh, he, he's a military. He did Iraq and okay. Afghanistan. He got blowed up real bad over there, right. survived, came back, and developed a sense of humor. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Which you gotta kinda have to when yeah. you. <laughs> um, I remember. My oldest sister, the one at 71, I went home and I bumped into my nephew and he was mad with her. He says, let me tell you about your motherfucking sister. Let me tell you what she do. She'll walk up to you and say some old sideways shit and while you responding, she will just walk the fuck off. <laughs> I said, that's rude. And I said, uh, well, you have to remember, you know, she busting 70 she, and she survived breast cancer. I mean, when you survive breast cancer or any type of death situation, it just automatically turns down the volume on whatever niggas are saying to you. <laughs> and he said, yeah, that's true. But you know what? I got a friend. He has third degree burns all over his body in constant pain. But when you go to visit him in the hospital, he is still fucking polite. <laughs> <laughs> Well, your dad gives me hope because you were, your dad was 50 when you were born. <laughs> yeah. And I'm 50 and my, my second child just hey, born. Hey, so, hey, man. Hey, <laughs> so I'm hoping I might still live to see them get to be 48 years old. That, hey, man, be, but at least the sperm still worked, though, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my sister told me, my dad, my, I have a completely different relationship with my father than my other sisters and brothers because yeah. when I came along, uh, like when, he, when, when, when they were small, he was out in the streets and gambling, booze, chasing women. Yeah. But when I came along at 50, he was slowing down a bit. So he... Very much the same. <laughs> so... <laughs> yeah, I heard about you in the streets. <laughs> casino, casino Richard. Um, <laughs> but my sister told me, she said, um, she says, Daddy had his first child when he was 19 but he only got interested in being a father somewhere around 50. Right, yeah. <laughs> well, I think that's, if definitely if that had happened to me, I would think I'd be saying, it's so difficult, that's such, such difficult. If you, if you, you, you don't have kids yourself, do you? Uh, I just started having sex last year, so. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> do you think about, I mean, I know you say, I've, I've seen you talk about it in, in, in interviews, but is it something you are thinking about having a family or is it something you've, dis, you've discounted? Well, to? if I'm honest, um, <coughs> excuse me, I have a 16 year old daughter. Oh, that um, <clears throat> I met her for the first time last year. Okay. Uh, I didn't know of her existence previously. And um, she don't have any of my facial features, but she has every bit of my nature. <laughs> she wants to understand everything. She feels like she can, and she asks endless questions. I remember the first conversation I had with her, she says, I have a bit of a heart murmur, and there's no history of heart disease in my mother's side of the family. Tell me, how do people in your side of the family tend to die? <laughs> I said, uh, gunshots and fatness. <laughs> 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 I 
Well, no, that's pretty incredible. So that's that was a that just you you found out about your daughter last year. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, um, yeah, she um, yeah, she's a big slice of all right. Um, <laughs> and um, we took to each other pretty quick. Cool. Oh, that's amazing. Um, yeah. Cool. Oh, that's. That did well. So then. there's I, that. We did that, hadn't I? <laughs> <laughs> like Stephen, it's like a Stephen Fry moment. That is. Uh, it's, uh, I'm very pleased with myself. <laughs> what I love about you, and the, which we're already seeing, is just the, the kind of quality of uh, uh, language and your use of language and the kind of poetry within the way you speak. It's just sort of so phenomenal. Well, see, um, where I come from, everybody sounds like me, right. <laughs> especially the women, and <laughs> and. Um, but it was only uh, when I was over here, when I got over here, that um, I sounded poetic to people, as you said. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> it's it's weird when I go. Most of my family have never seen me do stand up. Right. Here. And um, after I first started getting, you know, like a lot of notices and stuff like that, I go back home and my family would just look at me and just be, you can see them staring at you. Just they'd be like, he don't seem no different. <laughs> just still sitting up here talking junk and farting all over the place. <laughs> White people over there must be crazy. <laughs> um, it's funny, but it's not a joke. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there was a nice quote from your dad. I read you were talking about about saying that men are uh, quite quoting Solomon and the Bible and saying that men brought down by vanity. You're talking about vanity. Oh, oh, yeah. Um, yes, uh, my father is uh, functionally illiterate. He left school in the third grade. And, uh, but he's a master. He's 98. Yeah. So, you know, it's just, it's hard to get that far and stay dumb. And <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, he, um, he loved, uh, his favorite stories in the Bible are Samson and uh, King Solomon. And he told me once, he said, um, no, several times, he said, vanity has brought down more great men than any pursuit of money or vagina or booze. It's, it's, he said, vanity leads to all of them things. Yeah. And so uh, I keep a lot of friends over here in England because uh, English friends keep you grounded. <laughs> 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 they make you feel like you never left the ground because they treat you like dirt. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, it's... Um, I try to keep the vanity in check. Yeah. And um, but what was weird was when I got over here, <laughs> there's a strand of vanity um, or, or arrogance that you don't find much in America. Uh, uh, over here, they have uh, intellectual arrogance. <laughs> you know, it's just it's like ah, I just finished reading this book. I'm gonna go to this party and make people feel stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and do you think that's? Part of the successes, do you think, is, is to do with you having this kind of outsider's eye on, you know, because you, it's like you've come from a very different world to, the, you know, to this, to this world now, and you, you've, got this, you've got this outsider's eye, I think, still. Even though you've lived here for so long, it's you're still... Funny, very... It's funny the breaks we give people, subconsciously. Like, I get... Uh, early in my career, I got caught a, I caught a lot of breaks because um, I would say a word like, a nick, like nigger, and then people always go, oh, he's American. <laughs> 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 and... Um, I remember uh, about well, four months ago when I broke my leg, um, I was on, I'd be on stage, and um, if I forget a joke or if I fuck it up, all I have to do is go, <laughs> and then people would go, he's so brave. <laughs> <laughs> How did, because you, you're still on crutches, yeah. so that's, that's quite a pretty yeah, serious Yeah, I left him backstage to appear more manly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what did you do? How, how did you break your leg? Um, I started touring this year, was it uh, early May? Yeah. And um, the early version of the show, I had a um, Michael, Michael Jackson tribute section. <laughs> and uh, I was doing the moonwalk. And, uh, <laughs> and I felt something, felt like it kind of broke. But I, 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 I kept going because I'm true to the game. <laughs> And but then when I felt that second break, I thought to myself, well, I must not be doing it right. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, I was, uh... <laughs> now, what happened was I, was, I was, I was on my off night of my tour. Yeah. And I was in my flat. And when I'm touring, and there's just always stuff on the floor, like, you know, overnight bags, gym bags and stuff. And I was on the phone 
with my ex-girlfriend. And um, we were arguing, we've been arguing ever since we broke up years ago. And um, <laughs> the truth of the matter is, we both miss and kind of want to fuck each other again, but don't want to admit it, because we got a lot of pride. <laughs> and it kept, so she said some old crazy shit. So I can't remember what it was, but I was stepping over a bag, going into the bathroom, and I was like, what the fuck did you do? <laughs> and I was going down. And you know, there's a moment when you're going down, where you're like, I ain't gonna be able to rebalance this. I'm, I'm, I'm going down. <laughs> and so I thought, well, what I'll do is I'll make sure I turn and land on my back. That way I won't bust out my teeth and nothing like that. But I had forgot that at the time I was kind of fat. And, um, <laughs> and I didn't have my usual agility. <laughs> so I got broken in two places. It's a twist break. And uh, yeah, it's very unpleasant. <laughs> <laughs> And, did, and how did that affect the, the show? Were you, were you still, were you, were you had to stop touring or did you oh, carry no, on touring? Oh, no, no. Um, I, I was in the hospital room and um, the white people who make money off me, they was in there. <laughs> <laughs> and um, they was acting very concerned, you know. They were like, oh, Reg, you hurt your leg. But every time they say something, you could hear the undertone of, so we're going to have to cancel the tour? <laughs> And, um, but yeah, um, it, it's a blessing in disguise. Um, it actually made me slow down on stage. Mm -hmm. I mean, just, it, just, and enjoy every word. And I, I really gained a sense of command on stage. And so, yeah, and plus when you sideline, you, you see areas of the game that you don't notice when you're playing. Mm -hmm. And so it's, um, yeah. Yeah. What, what I love about you as well is you're very thoughtful about the craft. Man, for somebody I ain't never really spoke to that much, you seem to love you. me a whole fucking you. life. I love you. I don't, I don't like to socialize. I like, I'll only have a conversation with people if there are cameras on me. That is, that's how it works. Um, but, I, you know, that's, you, you really think about the craft of what you're doing. So you're very thoughtful about that, about the, how comedy works. Uh, the, the, there's another thing you were saying about how comedy is all about tone. Mm. And, you know, you're saying horrible, shitty things as a comedian a lot of the time. And you sort of see that. There was a great... Uh, Aziz Ansari, who I, I really love, was doing... accepting that award with the BAFTA. He won the BAFTA and he was just saying all these terrible, horrible things about BAFTA and how he'd flown over to America, <laughs> even though he'd been in Scotland. And he was, you know, talking about the food and it was awful. Anyone else saying it, we'd have gone, that guy's just so rude. Yeah. And yet, but everyone was laughing because of the way you were saying it. And it's kind of interesting, isn't it? It's not, when people take a, a thing, out, a line out of context or a joke out of context, then the, you just read it. You don't get the, the human behind it. Well, so I do, I mean, in, in comedy, uh, I think in society in general, but they've been in comedy for years. It's uh, just a group of people, I call them outrageous. And they are they're constantly outraged. And, and it's like my mom used to say is, it's one thing to misunderstand something, but it's a whole other thing to go out your way to misunderstand something. <laughs> and so, um, the people who take things out of context, they, sure. they, they, they're looking for that. So. Yeah. I mean, you know, I think most comedians will get that at some point, and you've, you've had yeah. that at different points where people are... I mean, people, you know, you are inviting, I suppose, you're inviting people to come and critique you if you're doing stand-up and... Yeah, and, but I've but, never understood, like, after you do a set. Yeah. And if I ain't like it, then, you know, I just leave and go, <laughs> I don't like that. I mean, I don't think I'm going to check him out no more. Yeah. But I don't hang around till you come outside to tell you, <laughs> I don't like that, man. <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> Well, that's why, again, with Twitter, it's become even more so, hasn't it? So someone will kind of tweet and go, I mentioned Dave Gorman was coming on the podcast, and someone then replied to us both going, oh, he's not funny. Just kind of go, <laughs> well, you know, I think he probably will live with the disappointment of you not liking it. <laughs> but it's a kind of weird thing to, you know, to tell him personally. So, you know, it's, 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 that's, that's what you're sort of dealing with, is this sort of... I mean, I, I remember I did a gig in Exeter years ago. There was like 300 people in the audience. And there was this one lady who just... She just got real irate, and she came up and she was like, that, that, that bit is just not funny. I said, so them 299 people who laugh and that don't count for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, well, and I think that's, I do a bit in my show about how, we, you know, we, as a comedian, you're, the, you're assessed every single second of your working day. Yeah. Every, people might get assessed once a month or every year in their job, every single second of our job. And the moment it's not going that well uh, is, you know, it's a sense, we know how we've done basically every gig anyway. We don't need an individual opinion because we know, as a comedian, you know exactly how well you've done well, on that you, night. You have to have your own system that you judge yourself by. Yeah, yeah. That's what kind of keeps you balanced. 
Because um, I'm coming off stage and people thought, that was great. And it just, I mean, it just it might have been great compared to the other motherfuckers you saw on stage. But <laughs> it wasn't all that. <laughs> and, and then, but at the same time, you know, it's like, you know when you're done well. And it might, you know, Tony Woods once told me, he said, a comedy club sometimes is the worst place to do comedy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I've heard a great story about you, which I hope is true, um, uh, was when you were at the... I want you to take over this story, so I'm just going to try and give you enough information to see. Okay. Uh, do when you, you were do, working... Do, do, do you love me in this one? I don't love you. <laughs> I, I kind of like it. I think this is cool. In the Pleasants... <laughs> In the Pleasant, I think you're playing the Pleasant, maybe the Pleasant's grand, and there's no toilet in the venue. Do you know what I'm talking about? Uh, yeah, I kind of do. <laughs> it was a comedian. Was it Andrew Bird? I can't remember who it was. <laughs> I ought to be ashamed to tell this, but you brought it up. <laughs> <laughs> there's, no ba- there's no bathroom backstage at the Pleasant's grand. And so it's about 15 minutes before, I, about 10 minutes before I go on, and there's a plastic pint glass, and it has about that much beer in it. So I relieved myself. <laughs> um, I, I, I was taught to survive. And so, um, <laughs> and so I'm doing sound check when it's not my, my turn, and Andrew Bird comes up and he goes, Christ, Reg, did you piss in my beer? <laughs> I said, well, that little bitch, if he, if he was hanging on for that, man, I don't know. And he said, I just drank from this. And I said, well, calm down. You're going to be funnier than you've ever been for about three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Don't panic. <laughs> it's, not, it's such a weird life to come up with. <laughs> oh, good. Good. So that's all I care about. Uh, I, I, I only saw this story in one place. Uh, I'm quite interested in this. That When you were 18, you uh, were accused of shoplifting. Is this true yeah, story? Yeah, yeah, yeah. God damn, I'm told all my business. Yes. <laughs> yes, I, was... I used to shoplift all the time. I never got caught. Yeah. I'm like, uh, I'm like the Jack the Ripper of, shop, of shoplifting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sir, you're white like us. Take what you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got, I, got, I got caught shoplifting, man. And uh, my mother, my mother and I, we loved each other, but we didn't like each other a whole lot. Uh, it was just she very strict disciplinary, very Christian. Just, but um, she fought tooth and nail. I remember sitting in the lawyer's office, and the lawyer says uh, to, to my family, it's my, my dad, my, my, my sister, and my mom, he says, well, Mrs. Hunter, I think that Reginald has uh, good grades, and uh, he's never been in trouble before. I think I can get him in what's called a pretrial motion, and I think we can go ahead and see if we can get the judge leniency. And she says, let me tell you what I know. I know this is my baby. I know he didn't do this. And I know I want this to go away. Do I make myself clear? <laughs> and it went away. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of them southern back room, pay some money kind of things. All right. Yeah, my mama knew about all that. And, <laughs> <laughs> and about five years later, I was sitting up watching a movie with her, Casablanca. And she was rolling up her hair. And she says, ooh, I do love a good Humphrey Bogart movie. They don't make them the way they used to. And, just, and what in the fuck made you steal all that stuff six years ago? <laughs> and I was like, you knew? She said, yeah, nigga, I knew. <laughs> <laughs> but did you get a job with the lawyer that acquitted you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How did that it was happen? A, um, just, um... I have to think that this was another part of my mother's intervention. Right. I have a feeling that she probably went to him and she says, I know I want him to work for you. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but his name was Carl Bryant. And um, he's the one who turned me on to Rumpel of the Bailey. Right. <laughs> and, um, and he also, he took it upon himself to teach me how to be a gentleman. And... I, I, that's the part that made me think my mama had something to do with it. Sure. She was like, teach him how to not steal shit. <laughs> <laughs> so how long did you work, work it with? For, for I him? worked for him for two years. Did he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a uh, great man. He died about 10 years ago. And um, I did a, he did a case, a divorce case. I was with him. And 
we was in deposition and we were representing the lady. And he just kept rolling his eyes during the deposition. And so I talked to him afterwards. I said, what's the matter? Hey, you don't respect this lady? This is our client. And he said, this is the third time that she's, he's, she's brought action against him. And every time she pulls out. And what you come to discover is she doesn't actually want to divorce him. She just wants to put him on trial. <laughs> 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 now you told us that Trump wouldn't win the uh, the election. You were quite quite frankly, man, I, I I'm embarrassed by that. Um, I feel that British people should punish me and not listen to me for a year. <laughs> um, but I mean, I, I mean, at the time though, we couldn't understand all the machinations that was behind Trump. You know, just all the analytics, all the funding, and just yeah. so yeah, very embarrassed by that. I mean, on, on multiple fronts, very embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> and your latest show, which I think you might have you just finished it, you were saying, well, you're going to do some more of these, uh, Some People versus Reginald. Yeah. So based on uh, the O.J. Simpson, well, the, that's where it's coming from, the O.J. Simpson yeah. program, the, the People versus... So what, what, were you, what was the show about? Um, the show was about um, some people that I've had battles with mm -hmm. um, on social media, uh, family members. Um, <clears throat> I got a brother, uh, my, my middle brother, Oliver, um, we like each other? No, we don't like each other much. Um, he thinks that I'm spoiled, entitled, and things just come a little too easily for me. And I think he's a Christian prick. And, <laughs> and see what it is, me and him very competitive. He's my mother's favorite child. And I am my father's favorite child. And since mama died first, I won. <laughs> Sometimes life just comes down to the horse you chose to back. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, that O.J. Simpson thing, man, uh, I'm embarrassed. I, I'm a little embarrassed to say this, but that documentary came out last year. What was it uh, Made yeah. in America? Yeah. Um, and I watched, it, I watched it like three times. And since 94, man, I mean, my, in my mind, I was trying to hold out for OJ. It's like, because I, I related. I mean, just, you know, black dude around lots of white people. They like him. And just, and just how, how could his ego not just... But I was looking at that from 94 to, like, last year. I was kind of rooting for OJ. I thought, well, you know, the glove and, you know, just, and just you know, racism. And just. But I was looking at that documentary, and I swear to God, for the first time, I thought, that nigga did it. <laughs> God damn! <laughs> I think I <it> did <laughs> And so, yeah, I just, um, he just got out recently, and I ain't, I, I, I ain't saying he's been punished enough for what he's done. I ain't saying that. But for OJ, I just, I really want him to go somewhere and be quiet and stay off of white people's minds. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the, that documentary was, like, incredible about, about you know, about, I mean, but... but I mean, America is in, in, it's so I mean, fucked imagine, up before. Imagine if somebody did a documentary that were four parts about you, <laughs> and the first three parts was intricately explaining why you fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> There's something creepy and merciful about that, I think. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's interesting that people, and we're seeing it again, people are built up and then knocked down, and, and often for good reason, <laughs> and, and, and often they... they you know the success and fame go the vanity go, that you were mentioning and goes to their head and they yeah. start believing that they're you know they're above the law and above everyone else but i remember when i left home to come to england my mama hugged me and she said take a good look you're looking at the last people left on this planet who love you enough to cuss you the fuck out <laughs> <laughs> But you see, your mother, the racial, your mother is very interesting, isn't it? I mean, it is. Oh, it, yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but you clearly, you know, as much as you, you had a hard time with her, you obviously, there's a deep love there as well. Oh, yeah. I yeah. mean, um, she, she gave, she was violent in her words. Um, slightly less so, but just formidable, formidable enough in her physical action. She was physically violent. I remember a few years ago, I was dating this lady. And uh, she, I was waiting in the living room with her. And she came out the room, like whips and chains and stuff. And I said, uh, no, thanks to my mama, I'm good with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good, I'm good. 
Um, but yeah, she uh, just she came up hard and just um, she just didn't trust things, you know. Just she she trusts she trusted honest label. She trusted uh, Christians and just yeah. and just um, she didn't she didn't like none of this coming to England. And when I became a stand up, I remember I bought her a television. I mean, bigger than anything I would have for years. Then and it's purely psychologically. Please accept me, Mama. Please, yeah, just please forgive me for going to England and not finishing college. Please forgive me, Mama. And she looked at it and she said, "You bought that with that stand-up comedy money?" I said, "Yes, ma'am. That ain't no kind of job standing on stage lying all the time." <laughs> What you gonna do when you run out of lies? You gonna be out of work then? <laughs> and I say, well, comics who lie on stage, mama, when they run out of lies, they still lie some other comedians, mama. Yeah, <laughs> 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 good. Um, <laughs> I, I, well, I like this as well. You do, I mean, it's a nice description of. Uh, of comedians, but you do you travel the world a lot. You're performing all over the world. You said you were part of an order of traveling monks. As you see, <laughs> see yourself as, so there's a kind, there's a kind of religious tone to that as well, though. Jedi you, joke monks. Yeah, <laughs> but that's you know you've got this you've got a nice you found this nice sweet spot I think haven't you where you're you know you're very well known in the UK and you and you make it and you do do really well touring here, but you can also tour around the world. You play America and 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 go all around. Oh, the world. I haven't done America that much. No, I mean. Um... I mean, like over here, you could go, you know, fuck the queen, and have the audience would be like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you do that in America, man. We're like, you don't fucking like it, buddy. <laughs> it's, it's um, it's it's just really it's really odd, man. I mean, I'm, I remember when I in the uh, late '90s when I started, um, I went to New York, and just uh, I was at the comedy store, and it was like 16 comedians on just. Uh, just a deluge of comedians. And just the things that was just openly racist and sexist and homophobic. I saw this black comic come out on stage and he goes, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You know what I hate? Faggots. Don't you hate faggots? I just, I just, I just like women. You know, I don't like faggots. And the audience was cheering and everything. And it's like, oh man, I'm, I'm glad I live in England. <laughs> <laughs> It's well, I, I, I found that when I went to, like, I've, I've never played America. Played you know what I'm afraid of? I'm yeah. afraid that somebody's gonna take that excerpt from the show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, definitely. That's all it's gonna be. Oh, no. We've been going, Reg, Reg, please, please come down. They're gonna wait 10 years when I'm, when I'm trying to run for president, and then the I hate faggots bit's gonna come. <laughs> But that's why when I was in Montreal, even last time I was in Montreal, the first time I was in Montreal was in the late 90s, but I was in Montreal in 2007 and seeing a lot of American stand-ups. And yeah, a lot of women doing, aren't men all, oh, men are all like this, but we love them, you know, and just going, <laughs> fucking men aren't like, you know, they were going, aren't they awful, bullshitting liars, but we love them. And you go, no, we're not. And you shouldn't love them if they are. And all the, you know, anyone coming on doing an ethnic character would be just, I know. my parents, they'll do it, my parents, so it's all right. My parents are all like, you know, and then just do the, I remember I was, in, I was in Atlanta at a local club, and it was like, oh, it was half black, half white, and there was this white comedian on, and he says, um, I just came from Nova Scotia. A lot of beautiful people were there, but black people couldn't live there. Not because you can't, black people can't stand the cold or can't survive, but chicken wings, $8 a pound. <laughs> so I looked around, I mean, I looked around to see if other black people was upset too. And they were like, no, we sure do love chicken wings. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, don't, do you think that kind of, view, do you think there's always a place for that where it's just the, the sort of reinforcement of stereotypes? Is that always going to uh, be in comedy or is that I mean, something that can... You laugh at what you laugh at. Yeah. And I mean, I mean it's, there's got to be places where people can go where they can laugh at stuff that yeah, maybe we don't laugh at. Yeah, yeah. And, sure. um, in, Amer in America, it stands to reason that America was born and steeped in racism. So it stands to the reason that some of the ways we commune and get together is over racism. It's, it's, it's part of the American DNA, I'm sorry to say. Yeah, it is, uh, it's a fucking fucked up country. You, you, 
and I say that fucking being in Brexit UK. Uh, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm glad I don't have to point that out. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll ask you, I'll ask, I don't, it seems a waste to ask your emergency questions, but I'm going to. I'll, I'll I shall appreciate you. it, man. I'll uh, listen to okay. some of them. <laughs> uh, I'll ask you, uh, what's, the, uh, what's the strangest thing you've ever found in the embers of a bonfire? <laughs> Popular question. He's not seen a Bigfoot. I asked him backstage, and I thought there was a good chance he would. What's the strangest yeah, thing you've ever found? He was backstage, and he was asking me this, and I was like, man, don't ask me nothing like that. <laughs> <laughs> I have, uh, I, 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 I have yet to root through the embers of a bonfire. Have you? Yeah, um, I, I was, I, I've been meaning to do it every year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, like, do you enjoy celebrating uh, uh, Guy Fawkes Night here when you're over in the UK? Do you, how do you feel about that? I've never really celebrated. I, no. just, I'm just, I would usually be home somewhere and I'd be like, what's that, something burning? <laughs> And uh, just it's it's an odd holiday. It's uh, a very strange holiday. Yeah, it's just. Uh, but I mean, you know, British people seem to be happy, so I'd be with. <laughs> <laughs> well, I took my to my. I forgot to mention this last week, but I took my two and a half year old daughter to the fireworks display, and she just went, "It's too loud. My ears hurt." What's going on? <laughs> Yeah, it's fucking. This is a weird thing. It's a weird thing due to kids to make them with their lovely sense of being bang, bang, bang. We're all deaf now. Okay, we can carry carry on. It's good, you know, it's good that we've got a healthy tradition of celebrating. I'm not even sure what Guy Fawkes Night's really celebrating, is it? Is it it's, saying... It's the, the attempt to it, overthrow your government, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, is it saying that was, it's good that they didn't do it, or we wish they had done it? I'm not. Is it, there's, yeah. it's, I think it survived because it's ambiguous enough. You can both sides... <laughs> it's basically Christianity, isn't it? You can I make mean, whatever you want of it. I mean, if they're, celebrating a, if they're celebrating the potential overthrow of the government, or the man attempting to overthrow the government, they should have a softer attitude towards terrorists. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, I'll try. I'll do a Christmas event. Uh, they do do Christmas you just in America. Can't I fucking I, resist, can you? I, but back, <laughs> backstage, I asked if they have Christmas in America, and they do have Christmas in America. <laughs> so we're going to have some fun. Do you have? Um, what, uh, I asked you some stupid ones backstage, and I don't want to do that. Do you think Christmas might have been invented by mulled wine salesmen? <laughs> Desperate to find an excuse to get rid of a warehouse full of little muslin bags full of weird spices. <laughs> that's not a good question. Ask. That's a joke. That's just a joke. A, that's a joke. What is the funniest fart you've witnessed around the Christmas dinner table? Did you say the funniest fart? Yeah, the funniest fart. The funniest fart I did. My mum, if you're watching this, <laughs> that I ever saw, it might was. My mum's a very well-to-do and polite. If you, you don't know, mind my saying that, I, I, feel, I feel like I'm just present while you intervene. So. I'm going to ask a question for you to give you time to think about it. Right. Um, and uh, she, she made a lovely dinner, and she's a very well-to-do, lovely, nice, softly spoken 75-year-old lady at the time she was. Uh, and then she stood up to take the plates away and did a fart, and it was the funniest thing I've ever seen. I mean, you had to be there. Because uh, uh, it was my mum. Don't... Uh, you can listen again now, mum. I remember I was telling somebody the other day, uh, I was... Just, a friend of mine, she was angry and she was going to post something angrily. And I said, you got to be careful about doing that because uh, things that you write and say today, they, 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 they hang around. Yeah. It's, it's like a fart that you do that just never disperses. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go in that corner. My dad farted over there in 1982. <laughs> it's still pretty rough over there. Well, that's, but that is a, that's a strange thing about comedy and we're sort of seeing that you know, in, in lots of different ways, but like you, it is. Now things are recorded and comedy tastes will change and you'll do, you know, people will do something in 2007. We're talking to uh, Simon Brodkin about uh, doing a character where he slightly blacked up and you might not do that now, but then that's still there on the record. You know, it's kind of an odd thing that if you're getting judged by, you know, just things you've said yeah. 20 years ago, and especially if you're saying them in a... And that's the, it's the context. Again, when it comes out of context... When I did all my, uh, my old shows, I did them all in, a, in a six weekends, you kind of think, God, there's things I wouldn't, you know, if now, now there's Twitter and someone could just take that line and go without the context of the whole show, you can... I, sometimes I look at stuff I said years ago, and I, thought, I think to myself, how did I find the nerve to say something like that? <laughs> I don't know what I was going through at the time that made me think that was all right. Yeah, well, it's true, <laughs> and you change your own mind about your own stuff. And so how, how do you feel about, you know, you're, you're approaching 50, I've got to 50. Yeah. Uh, and it's not good. Uh, how, how are you feeling about uh, getting older? I don't really have a whole lot of self-esteem issues wrapped up in my age. Uh, you know, my dad's going on 100. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I, I remember he was sitting at the table. He was feeding the dog from the table. And my sister walks up and she gets all ballistic. And she's like, you know, Teddy, the vet told you don't feed him from the table. That'll give him heartworms. 
And dad said, he my friend. I eat steak, he eats steak. Fact of the matter, he says, dog was eating something on this planet well before dog food. And so she started to go, go at him again, and I said, hey, 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 do you realize you're talking to a nigga who remembers when dog food came out? <laughs> 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 when it was the newfangled thing. <laughs> They're making food specially for dogs. <laughs> and so do you look, are you looking forward to getting so, older? I, mean, I think it's a comedian that's kind of interesting. My point territory. I was making is that, yeah, yeah I, I, I seen how he handled old age. Yeah. And just, um, and my, I come from old people, I was raised by old people in the heat. And so, yeah, it's just, um, I mean, my dad, he still likes to sip of moonshine every now and again. And um, to my surprise, he goes to, he sees a hooker like once every three, three months. <laughs> and I asked him, I said, are you serious? And he said, yeah. I said, how does it work? He says, well, you know, I'm almost 100. Sometimes it go up, sometimes it don't. <laughs> but if it don't, uh, she a real sweet girl. She don't charge me nothing. <laughs> And I said, just cause you old? <laughs> you know, so, oh, my mom's dead, by the way, so that's, yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> there was a look of grave concern on this woman's. <laughs> well, it's kind of nice to think you'd be 98 and still get erections uh, at mean, all, isn't it? I think that's, I I'm mean, pretty the, much, good. they've gone for me, haven't they? <laughs> yeah, how old is your last child? <laughs> yeah, um, I may get, um, sensitive about it, but yeah. um, also <laughs> my family stopped celebrating my birthday around nine years old, and so um, I just I'd be on stage sometime and I'd be like, "Shit, it's my birthday," and so I think there's good and bad with that, but I think the good that comes with that is it, it makes you less self-conscious about aging. Yeah, you know, I just I wake up in the morning and check and see if everything's still working. If it do, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's it's good to get. Older, it's better than not getting older, isn't it? I yeah, mean, it's yeah. like, you know, people, people yeah. keep dying now at the moment, which is, you know, and younger people keep dying. People are, you know, our age are dying, and it's, uh, it I, makes you think a little I used bit. To, I used to think years ago, it's like, because uh, it was only when I got to England uh, that I noticed women talking a lot about aging and, you know, don't match me my age. And it's, just, and it's like, and I used to think, man, it's just, I was noticing that younger and younger people were getting weird about, oh, God, I'm turning 30 next month. <laughs> <laughs> And I just thought, man, eventually you're gonna see a couple of nine-year-olds, and one's gonna be like, I can pee by myself and tie my own shoe, but I don't know what it means because I just see the big one-o staring me in the face. <laughs> well, it is. I do every ten. Well, it's, I've sort of done this ten every ten-year show now about getting older, and you kind of think. You know, I did one about being 40 and being upset about being 40, and I'd give anything to be 40 again. <laughs> you know what I mean? Wow. I'd, I'd like to go back, you know. So, like, you think, oh, this is bad, but you get older and you go, oh, you missed the, you've lost I that. I bet game. you've had fantasies of, like, doing shows when you're dead. And, like, <laughs> dead ain't fun. I have had fantasies. I've had fantasies <laughs> of creating a hologram of myself <laughs> to do a show about being dead and after, you, after you're dead. I think that would be good if you write it and record it. That you can still tour after you're dead. Yeah. Uh, don't forget to make it funny. I won't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll ask you another emergency <laughs> question to get out of that emergency. Emer I, I don't think you have. Have you ever appeared on the TV show Sunday Brunch? I don't think you have. You should go on it, it's good. I am. <laughs> I mean, you really asked a tough question. <laughs> <I do. laughs> all right, this is a good question. All right, all right. Would you like to have a bath with my dad? Well, I think, like most people, yes. Yeah. Um, obviously. Do you want to know more about him or just happy to um, say I'd yes? like to know what kind of bath water he like, because I'm very particular. He's, a, he's 81. He's just had an operation on his leg, so mm. you've got something to talk about. Yeah, okay. Uh, and it's in the bath. He's, you know, he's, he's, you know, he's all right. He's a quite nice guy. Yeah, yeah. He wouldn't I, touch or anything. It, would yeah. be, it wouldn't be inappropriate. Yeah, I'd just ask him, like, why are your son so fucked up about aging? <laughs> <laughs> Question. I'll put that. I'll put that in my next one. Uh, okay. I'll ask, this is a good question. Yeah, that's what you said before. <laughs> you like this one? <laughs> if your genitals had to turn into a sea creature for one day every month, I can already tell this ain't good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
But you can choose the sea creature. What sea creature would your genitals manifest into uh, on one occasion every month? I like to cover all the bases in this. Uh, it's been some touching stuff about family, isn't there? And then also uh, sea creature genitals. You've got you to do something for everyone. I demand an answer. Don't help him. And that's a bad choice. Yeah, don't help me cheat. <laughs> um, don't have to answer. I sure appreciate that. I really appreciate you okay. not making me answer that. Okay, hey, how much time we got to well, be wait, together? I've got to get, I've got to get, a, uh, I've got to get a train. Yeah, home, oh, so. man, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. You realize if I went back to the ghetto with these questions, I'd get killed. <laughs> Well, I'm going to let you take that half of action again. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can give it a go. Um, no, it's been, it's been amazing to talk to you. It's, um, we will have to wrap it up, but it's... Um, what's, what's coming up next? What are you going to do next? Oh, um, I'm still trying to find a flat. Um, <laughs> but I've kind of loosely made the decision that um, after my last work is done uh, for the year, I'm going to go somewhere for a few weeks, a couple of months, and uh, I'm going to get lean again and see if I can re rebuild my leg and reclaim my great speed. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's good. It's good to... Uh, it's, uh, it's hard, I think, as a comedian to take time to yourself, do you think? Because you, you've got to keep working because you feel you have to, but also you've got ideas coming. It's really good to take yeah, some time yeah. away. And, you know, when you take... Do you have that thing where, like, when you haven't worked for a while... You start feeling like, you know, others are gaining and you're losing your thing and you don't know what's happening. And you just, a little bit, yeah. And also, you just become shit at doing the job. I mean, that's the thing. Yeah. You come back you come back two months afterwards and you just yeah, can't you, do it anymore. You know, if you haven't been doing it for a while, yeah. you, you just speak into one person at a time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, all of a sudden, there's a whole bunch of people. Yeah. So, um, I got... Um, after I finished my last engagements this year, I'm not um, professionally obligated uh, till February. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna just, yeah, you know, I'm gonna go somewhere and I'm gonna get off smoking and become unfat and yeah. Let's and go together, Reg. Let's do you and me together. Let's do those two things together. You gonna bring that book? <laughs> <laughs> it's really gonna. Thank you, Reg. We'll be back next week, with Richard Osman. How do you like them sky potatoes? <laughs>